nobody gave me shit Always had this hustle ever since I was a kid Man, I'm so blessed, look at all that shit I did I ain't worried about no one else Gotta get it how you live, gotta get it how you live God had a different route, haters never understand But I bet they see it now, smoking on my own weed Snakes, I had to weed them out So many niggas putting in, so many niggas leaving out We get it on our own, that's what we about I didn't got it on my own, ain't check, nobody check, gave check. me We're about to go live Always had this hustle ever since I was a kid We're about to go live All right, I have 10 easy online business growth strategies for you We're gonna go live and show you how this whole thing works. Let me switch my cams. Boom. Wow, I know how to work this thing now. I didn't even know there was a studio mode till now. Now I know. Shout out to everybody who's here. We're going a little bit ahead of the Super Bowl, so just in case people want to bounce, it's all good. I won't take it personal. But we are live. We got Jay Lambo. We got Sassy here. We got Tyrone Sellers. What's up? So we're looking for the folks who want to grow their business 10x with 10 easy online business growth strategies. I want to break them down for you. We're going to take callers live. So if you have a Discord or you have a headset, you can hop right on the Discord with your simple headset. You don't need a camera or anything. And then we'll find your business problem and we'll solve it live together. AJ is on Facebook. What's up? We got 612 in here. Sergio, what's up? Ahmad is here. We got Sassy. We got Minx in the building. Kitty cat walking around. All right, so let us begin. Let us begin. How do I switch screens? I guess you don't need a screen just yet. But we're going to go over 10 ways to easily grow your online business. I have a whole list right here. I'm going to follow my list so I don't go off track too far. And at some point, I'll pull you up into Discord. The link is just busyworksbeats.com slash Discord. I'll set that up um, in a little bit. Okay, Mel making history. What's up? All right. So the question is, do we do screen or big screen? I guess. Hmm. Do you need the screen for anything? Hmm. Actually, I know what we're going to do. Let me set up discord and I'm going to let you guys hop on in. That way we can get straight to it. So the discord's not going to have a title. It's just going to say something easy. Hold on. Let me just copy the title. Right, so if you don't have Discord, you should hop on. It's completely free. Let's go to the clubhouse and start a stage. Let's just start the stage. Call it 10 easy. There we go. So we'll start off actually with you, and then I'll go into my 10 points. How about that? That way it's more targeted. So again, if you want to hop into our Discord, it's just busyworksbeats.com slash Discord. All right. Make sure I have all the buttons turned on. Here we go. Can they hear me on here? Check, check. They should be able to. Loop back, loop back. Okay. So let me switch my, this screen. Boom. Learning the buttons. Look at me being a pro. We got a little crack in the building. So again, we're live on YouTube right now. So I'm just giving people time to pull up and we can go over their business stuff and then we're going to help everybody in the room but i like to just focus on you guys first we got a little crack what's oh. going on hey -o. <laughs> you streaming yes i mute my mic only so it doesn't um feedback but yeah let us know your biggest biz your biggest that's a tongue twister your biggest business obstacles and frustrations and we're gonna um use your scenario to help more people uh I'm uh I'm in the wrong place. Uh <laughs> <laughs> It's all good. What was on your mind? We're just getting started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh I'm just leave. It's all good. <laughs> I think it was stage fright. Yeah, a little stage fright, y'all, don't worry. Uh Tim Spike was I didn't also know what this was. It's all good. I'm not. I'm just joking <laughs> with you. Thank you, buddy. Um, we got Tim Spiker in the building. So again, if you want to hop on up, just click the raise the hand button 
and we will pick your brain. Hold on one second. I got Tim coming up. So we're focusing, we're on YouTube right now. We have 58 folks here so far. We got Vasco on Facebook. Stacy Adams says, what kind of camera are you using? This is a Sony a7 III. Or wait, Sony a7C, I meant to say. What's up, Tim Spiker? Hi, uh, I'm Tim. Hey. Oh, can you mute yourself, please? Yeah, there we go. Hi, I'm Tim. Uh, I'm myself. 27 years old. I'm a DJ and producer from the Netherlands. I've uh, just spent about like four or five years uh, in Barcelona, DJing live there in front of audiences. And um, yeah, I've just recently come back to the Netherlands because, of course, COVID <laughs> ruined uh, a lot of things for me. Um, but uh, in the time that I was there, I did I did learn a lot of things. So, so is there anything you would like to ask me? Uh, well, more so I'm focusing on people's obstacles. But um, yeah, obstacles. I guess since we're here, since we're loading up, since you have experience, yeah. let people know kind of the reality of uh, one being in a country outside of the U.S. Have you been to the U.S.? Uh, no, I've never been to the U.S. Uh, I did. I have been to Canada, but I've never really, you know, done any DJing around there or anything like that. OK, gotcha. So let's focus on the energy. So this is something producers don't understand because they don't have a live audience um, who react to their every every motion. So speak about how to control energy. How do you get people to move? How do you get people to do what you want to do, but using the music? Let us know some secrets. It's it's definitely a combination between between like being present, really, you know, showing the people that you're there, uh, but also letting them know within the music that you're playing. So kind of at the, when you're doing this, especially if you're doing a warm up set, if you just came on, you know, let them know that there's a, there's a little bit of a warm up there. And then, oh, yeah, yeah, let them know that, you know, it's happening. They're feeling it. And then show them that you're feeling it and be like, you know, watch this. What am I about to do next? Hey, how are you guys doing? What's going on? We're listening to Tim it's, tell us about his um, DJ experience busy, over busy in words Europe. Beat. Busy words beat. You might be a little delayed. I, so I'm going to mute you real quick because you're interrupting Tim. Go ahead, Tim. <laughs> just, um, just came in here so, talking. So, yeah. No worries, no worries. Um, so yeah, just standing in front of your audience, just really being present there and, and showing people that, that you're there to do something for them, or, you know, show them that, that you mean, uh, business with what you're doing kind of, and, and don't be afraid to show that that's very important because if you don't do that, you know, if you're not excited by what, by what you're doing, that the audience might not convey that either. So like, it's, yeah, it's a good thing. That's a good point. Yeah. DJs are there to you know, use energy, which is the hidden currency, to pull in an audience. Um, but since I'm focusing on people with problems, I want to hear what Terrell has to say. For, forgive me, Terrell, I just had to mute you because Tim was just finishing up a thought. I didn't mean to uh, put you on mute there. Before, no. I, before I get across my uh, point, I just want to say, busy words, B, I am gladly to finally get to meet you. I am subscribed to your YouTube channel. I love your content. I love how you let people know how to work different DAWs. Like, I am awesome. a huge fan of you. I know I'm probably sounding weird a little bit. Oh, no. But Thank you. I've been wanting to meet you for a long time. Awesome. Thank you for coming up. I'm only muting my mic. So if I ever go mute, it's because um, there's like a little feedback. So I'm not uh, neglecting you there. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I always uh, love to hear, you know, how we plant those seeds and then it comes back with good vibrations. That's why Tim's sharing some tips from his experience over the Netherlands. And uh, we got you coming in here just off of stuff that we did probably years ago. Um, yeah, I'm and a 14-year-old music producer. I have my own music studio. Oh, dope, dope, dope. So to keep the energy up for the show, speaking of energy, I promise people um, I'm going to go over 10 easy online business growth strategies. You guys can feel free to stay here if you want. Um, but we're going to focus on the YouTube um, channel for folks who have uh, those hard-hitting questions. And I'm going to answer them live. But I do have 10 points. So I'm going to just um, ask if we can go mute for a second. And then when we're going to pull, we're going to pull up more people and then pick their brain. Yeah. And then I'll right. kind of leave it open for you guys, if you wouldn't mind. Right. So the yeah, first, sure. the cool. first, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. The first uh, pillar for 10 easy online ways to grow your business is referrals. So I'm going to ask you guys now, do you sell stuff online? Do you have an online presence or a business? No, I'm, I'm, just like you guys um kind of are like like 
um, like the people watching probably just just no. you know trying to figure out how can I go from here because I'm back in my room I'm producing stuff I'm making awesome music and I'm like where where am I gonna push that how am I gonna get that out there okay this is a perfect start then okay so thank you Tim and Terrell is that referrals because oh, no this applies to offline and online business which is referrals now here's how you can multiply your business super easily now before here's but it, here's the trick you have to do it as you're getting business so make it contingency meaning for example i'm using, using tim's scenario so if he's getting booked for a dj set before he says yes i'm going to make it part of my terms similar to like a rider where you have a request i'm going to say hey you have to refer me to at least three business friends of yourself who are just like your business if you want me at your event. Now, if that's too much to ask, then I would lower my price. And here's the trick. Here's the trick. I'm going to give everybody on the Internet a trick. Whatever your price is, double it. And what I mean by that is there's a reason why. So when you double your price, what you can do when you're negotiating live events and different opportunities, you can say, OK, I'll do half the price, but you have to promise me that you're going to refer me to three other opportunities or three more business friends just like you if you want me to take this job. So one, it's like looking at a glass of water. You could look at the glass of water as half full or half empty. And what that means is if I go from 50 to 100, that's a 100% increase. Nobody likes the price to be doubled. But if I go from 100 to 50, that's a 50% decrease. And what my point is, it's the same distance of numbers. It's about the perception. When you go down, you feel like you're saving something. It's only 50% loss. When I'm growing, I want to go from 50 to 100. I feel like I'm going upward. So in other words, if you want to negotiate um, different events and you want to expand faster, the quickest way is to get the business before you take the business. And we do that through referrals. So again, for everybody watching on YouTube, it's a little complex because you guys might not be in the service business. What's up, French on Facebook? But basically, you're multiplying your audience times three. So now every job you do, even if those three people don't accept you for new business, you still have 33% chance of new business because you have three new opportunities. So my point is, every time you take one job, you're actually multi multiplying it by three. Then you have the compounding effect. So you go from one opportunity to four opportunities. Okay, those four opportunities have three each. Now you have 16. OK, and this is this is the way a cell divides. So if you guys don't know, I studied biology. I was a pre-med major at Villanova University back in 2000. When did I go to school? 2009 That's when I started, graduated 2013. So one thing you learn about biology is that cells divide. So when you study life, you have one cell that turns into two, that turns into four, turns into eight, turns into 16. So we can mimic the way life is created through our business the same way by making sure that contingent to our deal, we take three more opportunities up front. Now, if that's too much to ask, again, use the 50 percent off technique, double your price in the beginning and then negotiate up to 50 percent down because to that person, it looks like they're getting a deal. But in reality, you were going to charge that anyway. OK, so you, that's why a lot of people double their prices. Um, you know, when you're buying, for example, I have, what is this, an Avalon preamp on my left side. And uh, what's up? Nice is here. What's up? You're uh, welcome to come up if you want nice. So I have an Avalon preamp on my side. The thing was 20 something hundred bucks. But at Sweetwater, at Vintage King, you could do what's called special financing. So you're not paying $2,000 up front. You're splitting it up into payments. And the reason they do that is because when you look at smaller objects, it seems easier to do. If I say you have to do 20 mile runs, a 20 mile run, that's going to freak you out. But if I say, hey, you have to do a mile per day for 20 days, you're like, oh, OK, that's easy. I can do that. So the same thing with business. You know, you guys are trying to feed an elephant to a toddler and it's just not going to work out that way. So I want to pull up uh, people with actual issues. I might clear the stage only because and thank you, Tim and Terrell, I'm going to pull you guys back up because I want this to be reserved for people with problems. OK, bring your problems here. I know it's Super Bowl Sunday. Super Bowl goes live at 630 in about one hour. Um, so I really want to make sure I'm helping folks. So I want to appreciate you for being so patient. So the second lever and I'm going to go big screen for you two real quick. The second lever. Oh, let's go big screen. Boom. 
Oh, wait, I didn't do what I... Give me a second, y'all. I'm getting used to the studio mode. Give me a second. Transition. There we go. Okay, so the second... So the first one, if you guys are keeping track, is referrals. It's how you multiply one business opportunity into three, into nine, into actually one opportunity into four, into 16, and on and on and on. So the next pillar for growing your online business is leveraging audiences. So you guys have probably seen it lately. I'm going to actually write a poll on YouTube. How many of you guys have seen my name all over YouTube from different producers? How many have seen my name on other channels yes or no you want to be on tv you're making all that noise you want to be on tv look who it is she wants to make an appearance it's minxie <laughs> her mom's gonna be like yeah minxie on tv yes <laughs> there you go she's making so much noise i guess she wanted to be on tv um, so that's where all the, the uh, hair comes from. Okay, so if you don't know, if you weren't in the mix, people were using my name to make YouTube videos and speak about my name, which is their prerogative, whatever. But my point is, what they're trying to do is leverage audiences. So if I was going into a new market and I wanted to penetrate a market, I don't just start from ground zero. That would be pointless. I don't go from ground zero. I'm going to go for the top first. I want to go to where the faucet is. So if I had zero followers, zero customers, zero anything, the first question I have to ask is where do customers already shop? Where do they already shop? And if you're on Discord and you, uh, we're live streaming on YouTube, we're going to pull people up in due time. I'm just going to get through these 10 points and then we're going to pull you guys up. So I'm not neglecting you guys. I'm just letting you know the deal. Okay, so the second uh, way to grow your audience is through leveraging audiences, or excuse me, to grow your business is leveraging audiences. So this is where you go where people already are. If I was going into the hair business, I go, who are the top 10 influencers that girls follow for hair tips? You know, who, what are the top 10 websites? You know, what is the style of, you know, then you get into the product. Okay. What style of hair do they buy the most? What are the best sellers? What do they talk about? What are the biggest problems in the forums? Do they have communities where they gather? Okay, you need to find where people actually are. And this is what we call leveraging audiences. So when you're talking to busy work speech, you're not just talking to one person, you're talking to 900,000 people. That's called leverage. You could fish with a rod, which means you're using two hands to throw out one line of a fish. Or you could fish with a net where you take those same two hands, you throw out a big net and you catch thousands of fish. It's the same exact two hands to throw a rod and throw a net. The difference is when you throw a net, you capture way more because you have leverage. And this is what leverage is all about. How do you do one thing that accompanies that, uh, you know, accounts for many? How do you do one thing that accounts for many? How do I do one thing that ends up with 12 results? That's how you guys need to think if you want to grow your audience. Now that's called growth hacking. And I've been focused on this specifically. Okay, so we have sound designers, for example, at BusyWorksBeats.com. We're rolling out some new sound packs. I'm going to open up BusyWorksBeats.com's branding for different sound designers. So if you join us on Discord, BusyWorksBeats.com slash Discord, I'm looking for dope sound designers. We have LA Crisis. He makes these crazy R&B loops. Actually, let me pull it up. You guys can hear the audio. So give me a second as I pull this up. So we partnered up with LA Crisis. He makes that Anita Baker type R&B, which is insane. The pack's called Intuition. Like this alone is just ridiculous. Just feels like authentic Anita Baker. So he's gonna focus on the R&B uh, chord and melody loops for you guys. You also get the multi-tracks and the stems for this. So you can break it down instrument by instrument if you want. We also partnered up with 808 Arc. He's crazy with his melody loops for drill and trap. So he is stuff like this. Let me crank it up a little bit. Okay, so he's has stuff like this. All right, we also are going to be partnering up with uh, Beach Boy. You guys have heard Beach Boy. Um, his Juice World type loops is XXX Tentacion style. His so we're going to have a lot of sound designers. Is my point, and I'm going to let you guys leverage my entire audience, my platform. Okay, I built this over what eight years now. People trust me. I have a good name. You know, we have the majority of music producers you know, learn from our content. 
We have, we've trained over 900,000 producers around the world. Some have gone to work with Drake, Kanye West, J. Cole, Post Malone, Ariana Grande, Ray Schremert, French Montana, Young Thug, Polo G, um, Lil Baby, Trippy Red, if I didn't already say that. I'm starting to repeat names if I keep going. But my point is, I just, I just realize these lights look different on the camera. Um, but my point is, so after all this training, I'm going, oh, you know, the one thing we don't have is sounds. So now I'm going to give you guys opportunities to partner up with BusyWorks Beats to put out sound packs. Now I do plugins. I do Narcos. I did Hermes. I did TBD. I did Vintage Fire plugins. So I've developed plugins, um, but we need sound designers. We're opening up opportunities for sound designers. So if you want to literally leverage our entire audience over these years, that's your opportunity. And that's what I mean by leverage. Go where people already are, where people are already buying stuff. Go where stuff already works and plug your thing in and then get a result from that. That's how you grow a lot faster. Okay. So thank you for voting on YouTube. I appreciate you. Okay. So next up we have the third growth mechanism, which is called traffic sources. Now here's where a lot of people skim. Now, if I ask you guys on Discord, Twitch, and YouTube, where do you get your traffic from? I guarantee you're going to say YouTube or Instagram. And those are the only answers I'm going to get. Where do you guys get your traffic from? Where do you get your traffic from? Okay, so I'm typing into YouTube for those who don't know. French Coleman's on Facebook. We got Kevin Newman. So you build leverage by remixing popular content. That's one way to do it. You could stitch. You know, why try to make your own hit song when you could just re-stitch or remix a meme that already works. You know, it works for a reason. It's because people resonate with that specific piece of content. DJ A1 is here. What's up? Beat stars, to be honest, but IG, it mostly comes from IG. Interesting. All right. So we got a lot of people in the Discord now. So everybody who is listening in, I'm going to open up the hand raising so that you can pop on up. I'm going to take your questions now because if I do all 10, the problem is I'm going to forget everything. Uh, that you guys had to say. So we're going to pull you up in real time, present your business uh, obstacle and frustration, and we're going to solve it in real time. And we're going to help people as they listen in. So I appreciate everybody for hopping in. Team Leader 216 is on the queue, so you're cool to come up. All right, but traffic sources. I'm looking at your answers. You guys say YouTube, Facebook, and IG. Facebook and TikTok. I forgot about TikTok. I'm sure a lot of people are going to say TikTok. YouTube. You guys said beat stars, but it's but IG, it mostly comes from IG. Instagram, okay, Instagram, Facebook. So one thing people don't do is open up more traffic sources. So I'm gonna give you about 10 traffic sources right now at the top of my head without even looking at my notes. I'm gonna give you 10 traffic sources. Traffic sources include Pint all the social media websites. So we're looking at Pinterest, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, YouTube Shorts. Instagram Reels. We're looking at long form YouTube. We're looking at um, Google blogs. A lot of people stop blogging. They forget that Google is the god of the internet. So there's a lot of Google traffic out there running to a lot of websites that aren't yours. Google traffic people forget about. Uh, what else? We're now. So I don't want to go down the rabbit hole about that because that that would take a whole two hours to really explain traffic. But the key is you need to look at your traffic sources and give people the type of material they expect. So, for example, if I go on Twitter, do I expect long form content? No, because Twitter is built in our head that we want short clips and short ideas, short thoughts. We're not going to be reading a book when we're on Twitter. The whole point is to be a micro blog. Twitter is a micro blog website. So sometimes you guys are making dope content. It's just for the wrong platform. Now, for the longest time. I still think TikTok is branded as like a humor platform or a largely entertaining platform. It's very hard to take traffic from TikTok to other platforms. So if you guys are building your whole life on TikTok, I would be really weary because the issue is that because TikTok is so addicting, people don't leave TikTok. So you're building up this huge audience, but you can never sell them anything because they'll never leave the app. And I won't say I'm using never as an exaggeration. So, you know, one thing you need to measure is when you make content on YouTube, how many people from YouTube go to your website? You need to measure that, what's called a conversion. How many people come from your YouTube videos over to your website? You need to know that number. You need to know the number of people who come from Instagram over to your website. You could do this through Google Analytics because it shows you the traffic source. Now, it's difficult to set up. I'm not saying Google Analytics is easy, 
But the more you understand your conversion rate from content to people actually going to your website, the more you'll have clarity as to how hard you have to work in order to get a result. So for example, if I make a YouTube video and it requires a thousand views to get one person on my website, I know that if I need a, if I want 100 people on my website, I need to get 100,000 views. So now I know how hard I have to work. I have to get 100,000 views. Okay, so now it's just a matter of will I do it or will I not do it? We got Terrell popped up. Let me make sure you're good to go. Did you have a, an obstacle or a question? Yo. Yeah, go for right, it. So is I'm delaying. You may be having YouTube in the background. So turn off the YouTube app and then just listen on Discord. Yeah, let me turn this. Yeah, you're right. I do got YouTube. Yeah, I'm, I'm delaying now. You're good to go. But yeah, what's your biggest frustration? Or at least so far, we've only gone over three of the 10 pillars of growing your online business. So what are the so, point? Yeah. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. And what I'm trying to do is like I make beats. So I'm trying to like I put beats on my YouTube, but I want it to grow. I want more people to start listening to them. I need like more viewers. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to let like let my my overall network grow at the same time. So, do you have any like specific uh, advice for that? How many videos have you published? Um, it's been such a long time. I would say like maybe like two so far, because I see I wasn't getting any fame from it. I wouldn't say fame, but I wouldn't get like viewers. Like I wouldn't, I wasn't getting noticed. Right on. That makes sense. You know, we all get discouraged every now and again when we don't get the results we expect. So, I mean, that's that's typical, even myself. Um, but I'm going to give you hardcore solutions, but I'm going to give you the solutions in form of a question. So when I ask you these questions, I only want one word answers. I don't want a whole paragraph and a whole excuse chain. OK, so how many yes, videos sir. have you published? Like two. And what is your type? What's your genre? Um, Trap. Who are your like? What are you putting the titles like? Playboy Cardi type beat. What? Who are your artists uh, that you focus on? Pooh Shiesty, Big Thirty, all that. Okay, like the Memphis rappers. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Now, do you actually add tags in your YouTube videos? Yes, because apparently I do this only because I know people like to take people. You broke the rules that quick, day. Terrell. You broke the rules. I said one word answers, and you already broke the rules. So I'm going to pause you because you're, you're you're missing the point. OK, Sorry. so it's all good. I'm just letting you know, this is, this is called drilling, by the way, for anybody watching. And it's called drilling. Um, all the business mentors I've been around, they drill. And this is going to get all the impurities out of you so that when you go back to YouTube, you'll have actual actionable steps you can use to grow. So I'm not doing this to be rude. It's called drilling. Uh, OK, so now that you told me you have Pooh Shiesty, which is like a Memphis style rapper and Big 30. Now. The next question is, do you have moving video or do you have static image? Um, uh, honestly, I don't know. Do you have an do you have an image like a picture of Pooh Shiesty, just static oh, or do you have a, a yes, video that moves? Yes, sir. I got a, uh, I just got images. That's it. OK, so let me tell everybody in the crowd here. I've studied science. I was a bio major pre-med to be specific. Uh, Villanova. We got Dino on the line. Oh, I got you, Dino. Next time you want to come up. And uh, one of the things you learn in scientific, um, the scientific method is that for anything to be statistically, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Statistically accurate or si statistically significant. That's the word for anything to have any significant statistic status. You have to have at least 25 data points. So when you told me you only have two videos, that lets me know you don't have enough data points to come to a conclusion. But also remember that YouTube is a video platform and we're putting up still images, mostly because other people put up still images that are in the top. But what a lot of folks don't understand is that, you know, you're playing the um, the ad game. So part of YouTube is what you put up, but the other part is the part people don't see, which is sponsors and ads. I'm not going to go so deep into it. But when I'm buying an ad, I'm going to buy I'm going to put it in front of channels and videos that relate to that specific ad. So if I go from a progressive commercial about flow doing something stupid on the TV and then it immediately goes to a static image, it doesn't translate. 
which can actually hurt um, the ad's reputation because of the way it's associated to the content. So what you want to do is make sure you're blending in with the stuff that the sponsors do. Now, you can't see what the sponsors do. So the next time you go on YouTube, go into an incognito tab. I'm going to do it right now. What's your channel, um, Terrell? Do you know your channel? Can you hear me? <laughs> We're just going to type in Terrell Beats to see what pops up. Okay, Terrell on Tubby. Okay, I don't know if it's the beat or Tubby, but can you hear me? I think we lost Terrell. He moved down to the audience. It's all good. We lost him. So the first step is if I can't find you with a simple Google search, type in your whole name. That's where we need to start. So that's why I asked him, did he have tags? You need to put your name in your tag so that when I search, think about what the purpose of SEO. So you guys don't have thousands of videos. Let me open up my um, YouTube dashboard just so you guys can understand what I'm talking about. So the reason tags are important is when you have a see a lot of people who have smaller channels don't understand how important it is to have tags. But when you have over a thousand videos and, and you've already covered certain topics, you can't keep using the same tags because now when you search a certain term, you're going to pull up the same exact videos over and over and over again. So let me show you in real time, making sure that you could actually see this. Hold up. Where's my screen? Boom. I know people on Discord can't see this, but if I type in FL Studio 21, I have at least 100 videos about this. I have 30 videos with FL Studio 21 in the title. If I type in FL Studio, I have 109. So if I'm trying to go through my own channel and be like, where's that video where I talked about X, Y, and Z? I have to go through 109 results to get to the video I'm looking for. So tags are a way to differentiate when you have lots of results, how to differentiate one thing from another. So when you're using tags, you want to put everything that's different about your new video from the rest, plus your main keywords. So it's not just a keyword battle. It's also what is the thing that separates this video from the next video? Because literally when I go to search, I need to be able to find that specific thing. If I can't find it, I'm going to get frustrated and leave. So that's, you know, a pillar that a lot of people are forgetting about is the importance of a tag and what a tag does. It doesn't just pull in volumes of traffic. It's also for when you're actually looking for something, how to actually find it. Okay, so I don't want to harp on a dead horse. But Terrell got scared and ran away because I was grilling him. Um, but you guys got to realize that if you don't have at least 25 data points, I would actually say 100. If you don't have 100 data points, you can't judge if something's successful or not. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So let's continue this list since Terrell got scared. And by the way, everybody on Discord, we're on YouTube Live. So if you want the visuals, you can hop over to YouTube. Um, I'm going to occasionally pull you guys up and then we're going to ask you your greatest frustrations in business. So you have a chance to be on the live stream forever and plant it into history. OK, so the fourth leverage point here to grow your business is called knowing what's called the market cap. So if I ask the YouTube chat, I'm going to say, how many people do you think are actually in the business? How many people? Thank you. Class E beats this. Thank you for the game game. Put nine ninety nine on his name. Sheesh, rich man. Thank you. Um, so how many? Since you guys are mostly producers, how many artists do you think are in the market to buy beats? And we're going to just give me a simple number. If you're on YouTube, you can actually type it in. If you're on Facebook, you could type it in as well. So the question is, how many artists do you think are in the market to actually buy beats? OK, all artists combined all around the world. How many musical artists do you think are in the market to buy your your beats? Since we're talking to mostly a hip hop audience, I'm going to say mostly your hip hop and pop beats. How many people in the world do you think exist and consider themselves music artists who buy beats? OK, very different thing. I could be a music artist who doesn't buy beats. OK, Classy Beats says there's only 100,000 of artists. Cal Beats says 20. He might be aiming for the top dogs. All right, that's the only two people that want to guess. Only three people want to guess. 150,000 plus. Five million says Shabizla. Shabiz LA. Nice producer says 50% of what? 20 to 30% of what? Of all artists. How many artists are there? Market cap means how many people in total are there. Video TT Greedo says 175,000. Video TT says 3 million. Shabbos is 5 million at least. OK, so what do you think? OK, now that you asked that question, now that we asked that question, what is 
a social media platform where artists go to promote their stuff. Now, the easiest one I could think of is World Star Hip Hop. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to World Star Hip Hop. And when you're doing market research, it's much more in depth than this. Okay, I'm just using general websites to make a simple point. So this is not actual market research. What you would do is go to somebody who has actual data. You would go to places like Statista. You would go to places like Gallup polls. Okay, so this is the source of traffic, understanding what's called the market cap. Okay, now we also showed statistics about um, the music business. What chart was that? Darn, I think I moved that folder, unfortunately. We had a um, live stream where we went over the music business versus the music versus everything else. Let me see if I can find it. I think I deleted the folder. Darn. But basically, there was $8 billion of revenue out of the $25 billion created by independent folks who use things like an ASCAP or use um, different systems within the music business. So that gives you the market cap as far as dollars. Now, actual buyers, it doesn't really matter because if there's $8 billion out there to be spent on promoting music, which is going to be majority artists, because those are the front facing people. You don't hear too many beat tapes nowadays. Eight billion dollars. Now, how many producers do you guys think are in the market? How many producers do you think are out there? OK, you guys said TikTok. Thank you for um, the other platforms. Spotify, SoundCloud. It's hard to measure SoundCloud because everybody's a user, both artists, producers and the actual listeners. It's hard to judge Spotify as well. But TikTok, what you can do, I'm just going to give you little tidbits here and there. If you go to TikTok.com, when you make a post, let me see if this works just from here. I'm thinking maybe $40. If you do hashtag producer talk, it usually tells you how many people are in producer talk. Now, I don't know if you could do this just off of um, a simple search, but last time I checked, let me just open up TikTok real quick. Hold on. Give me a second. I'm going to go on TikTok and do a post. So when you're posting to TikTok, whenever you do your hashtag and the word, it tells you how many people are in that specific market for that specific keyword. So I'm going to make a little fake post here. Blah, blah, blah. OK. OK, at least one more second. Boom. OK, now I'm going to do hashtag. Producer talk has 2.2 billion views on just produ producer talk alone. So the things we want to measure with market cap are going to be how much money people are spending, how many views are we getting? That's the traffic cap. And then how many people, how many competitors are in the space? So the number one thing you need to worry about is money. So if we're talking about building a business, you need money to run your business. So we're going to focus on the $8 billion in the music business right now that you can actually grab for yourself. $8 billion. Now that's the minimum. That's not including online sales um, as well, because that's just music products. OK, so you guys have a big pool to choose from. I would say there's only about 20 million producers max. So even if you divide evenly 8 billion, OK, by let's say 20 million, just to be really exaggerative. Let me do this online because I can't do that on my phone, actually. 8 billion divided by divided by let's do 2 million, to be fair. Let's just be conservative. $4,000. So even if the world was just being fair, by default, everybody would be worth $4,000 as a producer by default. Now, that's if the money was spread. OK, so that just shows how much money is involved in this craft off the rip. If you start a beat business, automatically you're worth $4,000 using that specific math because there's $8 billion floating around. How much of that pie do you have? OK, so go to places like Gallup polls, for example, you can go to Meteor, you know, there's different ones. They changed up the website since I was in college. So you have to probably search music business. But these stats, you know, you're not worried about your competition. You're worried about the how much money is flowing. That's what you need to worry about. Classy Beats says there are more artists than producers in general, but there are way more producers selling beats than artists buying beats. Good point. So artists exist, but they're not buying beats. So that's the stuff we need to chill so down to. But the main thing you guys got to focus on is how much money's out there, because we're not worried about beats being the solution all the time. You know, if there's a book called $100 Million Offers by Alex Hermosi, I'm reading this, I'm rereading this. And it talks about how, let me make sure this is actually clear on the screen. You can't see it. OK, it's called $100 Million Offers by Alex Hormozzi. And it says how to make offers so good people feel stupid. What does it say? Stupid saying no. 
Okay, so $100 million offers by Alex Hormozzi. How to make offers so good people feel stupid saying no. If you're watching the replay, I'll link this below. I have an Amazon affiliate link. I'm an affiliate on Amazon apparently, which I completely forgot. <laughs> so if you want to support the channel, click that Amazon affiliate link. Um, so my point in bringing that book up is that it's more than what you're selling. You're selling, people think they're selling a beat. What if I told you whatever you're selling is not what people are buying? What if I told you that what people are buying is an outcome? Okay, they're buying what's called a desired outcome. Your thing is just a means to an end to get them there. They're not buying your beat. They're not buying my courses. You're not buying my plugins. You're buying what's in your mind, your intent. That's what you're buying. You're buying your dream outcome. Game is the Alex Ramosi of the producer community. Hilarious. I appreciate that because he's a goat for real. You said, yeah, but there are producers that charge up to 500 for a beat, 500K for a beat. Currently, I haven't seen any producers charging 500,000 for a beat. Um, so I would like to see those statistics. Uh, okay, so moving on, because I realized that I'm just beating a dead horse. So if you, oh, here's what I was going to do on YouTube. I was going to go to World Star real quick. So if you go to YouTube, World Star. So again, if you're on Discord and you're listening in, um, you can raise your hand to come up. And we're going to answer your hard question. World Star alone has 26 million subscribers on World Star alone. 26 million. That's just one platform out of the whole culture. So multiply that by 100 at least. You have, two point, you have 200 million potential customers out there. Now, customers, I'm talking about everybody from buying beats to the actual consumer who listens to beats. OK, so again, people aren't buying your thing. They're buying it a means they're buying an outcome. Your thing is just a means to an outcome. Do you mean producers having beats for sale, wanting to sell them or producers that actually are selling beats? That sounds like a conundrum. Do you mean producers having beats for sale? Oh, wanting to sell them or producers that are actually that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get you to sell more beats. There's eight billion dollars floating around for you, but you got to learn how to grab it. All right, I might close the Discord because you guys are too scared to raise your hands. So you could just watch the um, live stream on YouTube. Okay. I don't want to make this too focused on people. You know what I realize is that folks are a little scared to come up because it just feels like I'm going to grill them to death. And I'm not. You know, I'm just going to use your scenario to help other people. I look a little red. I don't know why I look so red. Maybe my lights are too low. Get my lighting right. What the heck? I forgot here. I think this is where it starts. Okay, so let's continue this list. I don't want to focus on that so much. Okay, the fifth technique to grow in your business is combining tech from different industries. And this is why I have such a unique perspective. I learned this from Jay Abraham. He's a marketer who uh, talks about preeminent marketing, meaning how do I go from, how do I know this before my audience even knows this? It's called preeminent marketing. How do I do stuff before my competitors even think of it? Preeminent marketing. So for example, if you go to busyworksbeats.com, we're partnering up with sound designers currently, okay, because I've built, built plugins. Now I look yellow. My color just changed live on YouTube. That was weird. But we've had plugins. I've built courses. I've done the whole thing. And now I want to partner up with sound designers. Okay, so if you go to busyworksbeats.com, I'm using me as an example. Um, you'll see that I've innovated a whole new style. So if you go to busyworksbeats.com, okay, so if I'm going to open this up. I have Narcos at the top currently, but if you click on this other tab, it talks about we have sounds booster packs. So I thought, wow, I love Yu-Gi-Oh. I love Pokemon when I grew up. I rebranded the whole website in a Yu-Gi-Oh type style because I've created a new style of uh, product, which is you can buy sounds like booster packs, quite literally. So the same way you open up a pack, you get you know, nine cards in the pack, you get, you know, a couple commons and you get a rare, a guaranteed rare, and you're trying to get Charizard. So I came up with a new um, concept called uh, Boost Sounds Booster Packs. And of course, Cymatics copy my idea because they copy everything I do. OK, because I'm the truly innovative one. OK, so if you open this up, it describes how this actually works. So you go down here, you open up your pack, you get a guaranteed 101 shot so that you're not wasting your money. You actually get dope sounds. You get a guaranteed 101 shots and then you get a random bonus inside each pack. So that could be a sound pack. It could be a, uh, you know, mostly sound packs. We're going to brand busyworksbeats.com for sounds more so than courses. Our courses are premium.busyworksbeats.com. 
And we also have an affiliate program I forgot to tell you guys about too. So if you want to make money by helping other people, you can join as an affiliate. I actually have an affiliate program. We have people actually making money already. And I just kind of secretly opened it and people are already making money already. Um, so again, the whole theory behind it is I loved Yu-Gi-Oh! I love Pokemon. I said, why don't I bring this to the music producer community? We're all buying packs, but the pack, the problem with the pack is that if you go to like any other website and buy a drum pack, it's just the sounds in the pack and then that's it. You get bored of the pack. I said, how do I make this fun? You make it fun by making it like Yu-Gi-Oh! I remember the rush of grabbing a pack of Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. For those who don't know what Yu-Gi-Oh! cards are, let me let me show you um, what Yu-Gi-Oh! is. Probably, oh, you guys can't see the screen that whole time. Nobody told me. My bad. Dang, I'm sitting here showing you stuff on the screen. You didn't even see it. Okay, let's go back a little bit. My fault. So let's start over again. My bad. I didn't know you guys couldn't see. Um, so I have a new innovative uh, product called Sounds Booster Packs. Okay, so you can open them up just like Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So if you guys don't know what Yu-Gi-Oh cards are, Yu-Gi-Oh card packs, um, they look like this. So for example, if you go to the store, you could buy a pack. I don't know what pack that is. That looks like a pack I've never seen before. Uh, where's the classic packs? Pharaoh's Servant. This is like one of the later ones when I was getting out of the game on Yu-Gi-Oh. So you can go to the store, buy a pack of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. It comes with nine cards in a pack. And it comes with, a you know, kind of like the run in the mill cards. But then it comes with one guaranteed hard to get card or rare card. And each pack is completely different. So you could buy one pack. You can get all the cool cards or you can get one pack and it's completely different cards. So I brought this to the sounds business and I said, how do I create sound packs for sounds? Because what I realized, what I loved about music was when I discovered stuff, when I discovered sounds, when I stumbled across sounds. And when I discovered music or songs, so I said, let me come up with a system where when people buy this thing for $19.97, they're guaranteed to get something because you have to guarantee that they get something or else it's just random. Okay. So they guaranteed to get 100 one shots, which I call vintage fire, and they get a random sound pack. Okay. In each pack. So if you buy one pack, it could give you random sound pack. Number one, which is the ultimate producer bundle. If you buy another pack, it could give you the X drums which is worth like $50 each. Okay, so you get these um, in addition to the one shots that come with this pack. So I created this concept. Again, other companies ran with it and stole it because they're just whack. But I innovated this style and I'm rebranding as um, the Yu-Gi-Oh type style because I just love Yu-Gi-Oh. So now I'm partnering up with other uh, sound designers like LA Crisis, 808 Arc, and now we're building out our sound library. So if you want to be one of those folks, just hop on Discord because I literally scout people on Discord um, for our sound design. So let's go to busyworkspeech.com slash Discord. When you're in the Discord, go to the left side where it says where it says notifications. Click the little drop icon and then go to sound designers and just post your best sound design here. I'm going to go through every post until I find people who are extremely dope. That was a lot to say. And then you could leverage our audience and, you know, partner with BusyWorks Beats and leverage our audience. So that's what I mean by leverage. How do you get in the game without having to do all the hard work of trying to get followers and build a buzz and do all that stuff people talk about? It's like we already have all the people here already. So you can leverage this audience and I'm getting people paid. Even if you're not a sound designer, go to BusyWorksBeats.com. I have a new affiliates program um, and let me open it up so you could actually see it. So a couple of people signed up without me even telling them. They've already sold like hundreds of dollars worth of stuff. OK, so if you go to this is not the screen, you'll see. Let me um, log out real quick Let me go to incognito tab just to show you what the screen looks like. So if you go to busyworksbeats.com, load this up. So I'm trying to make you guys just as rich in this equation because I said, why am I like, why am I working so hard to keep everything to myself? This is the time where we expand. And I'm using my own growth techniques to expand. I'm giving you guys opportunity to leverage my platform and we grow together and everybody gets paid in the process. Sound designers, the affiliates. So if you join the affiliate program, it looks like this. Earn up to 15 percent commission for every successful referral. You can actually the more you sell, the higher your commission goes. It goes up to 80 percent depending on how much you sell. If you're now partner is the 80 percent level. That's what we call you partners. Um, 15% is entry level. Then we have everything in between the associate levels from 15%, 20%, 30%, 50, 60, 70. Partner level is 80%, where it, which is a crazy 
I don't I haven't seen anybody offer more than me as far as like affiliate commissions in this space, 80% commission. Okay. Um, and then you click join now and you just fill out the simple thing to join. Okay. And that's how quick you can be making money with BusyWorks Beats. So you won't even have to make your own product. You can offer our products to your audience without creating the product. This is called leverage. In other words, what I'm just saying is if you have an audience mixed with producers and artists, you don't now have to create all these sound packs. You can say, oh, BusyWorks Beats stuff already has all the sound packs. All I got to do is make my beat and insert my affiliate link to BusyWorks Beats. Okay. It's as simple as that. Now you get paid and you make your offer even bigger for your potential audience. So it's a win-win for everybody. Let's continue these points. I'm going to go full screen because I just wanted to show you all the new website. All right. So the next one is combining tech from uh, different industries. I learned this from Jay Abraham. He talks about preemptive strikes. He talks about force multiplier. And what I just described is called a force multiplier. So instead of just selling the beat, we're going to sell an offer. Okay. An offer is when you combine multiple things into one thing. Okay. So this is the book. I'm going to link it below. Hopefully I remember. Let's put my Amazon link. So now you say, instead of just selling the beat, you now have what's called a bundle, okay, where you combine and create what's called force multiplication. You create a bundle of stuff. So you say, okay, now I have my beat. I have BusyWorks Beats who gave me a discount to give to my audience and you make money from the links. Then on top of that, you can give away stuff from your other partners and websites. Maybe we'll create like a database where we can all share each other's stuff and leverage each other's stuff. If you guys will want that, I'll create a mastermind group and um, do it that way so we can share assets and use those assets to put into our offers. So, for example, if I was selling, you know, how, you know, just 10 beats in a package, I would go, oh, plus you get this social media YouTube course from busyworksbeats.com for free. And you could take that asset, put it into your product like that. And now the thing is even bigger. Now they go, OK, cool, because after I bought this music, I did want to learn how to make um, my YouTube grow so that I can make money from this beat that I just bought. OK, so that's how you need to start thinking. It's more than just the beat. So that's called force multiplication. When you bundle stuff together from other people, you're leveraging to increase what's called force multiplication. Now let's go move into uh, combining tech from different industries. Here's where I've learned from the jewelry industry, the fashion industry, the film industry, athletics, music industry. I've been in Web3. Where else have I been in? Web3, jewelry, medicine. I've been in medicine. Okay, I've learned a lot of commonalities between each industry, but each industry has a cool, unique thing about it. So, for example, in the hair business, you order. It's almost like order uh, custom to order or if that if that's a word. Basically, you, it's a lot of customization. So you have to hedge against your cost by um, leaving a little gap to where you can order from a supplier but you don't want to keep that inventory on hand. That's what I learned from the way, the uh, hair business. Something I learned from the jewelry business is perception is reality. Whatever you put your thing next to, people associate the value of that thing with your thing. So if I stand next to a Rolls Royce, people associate my value with the value of a Rolls Royce, which is a quarter million, $400,000 car. So if you want to increase your perceived value, you need to stand next to quite literally people who are more valuable or things which are more valuable. OK, or associate your brand with the things that are more valuable. That's called marketing, raising the perceived value. What other industry have I been in? Athletics. Athletics is all about. Let me think of the unique thing about athletics. Oh, social status. One thing that people want is social status. So, again, when I said that people don't want your thing, they want an end result. Your thing just gets them to the end result. So you wonder why athletes get all the girls is because the girls don't want the athlete. They want a higher social status. So they get with the athletes more often than they get with the dude who works in tech. It's because there's more social status with an athlete because he's more seen and more visible in the world and more known. OK, so it raises social status. When you have more people below you, you're raising your social status in the hierarchy of the way society is built. So the more people below you, the more you go up. So social status is when you gain followers. It's when you have a huge audience to go live to. That's all social status. OK, so that's what the woman is chasing in that case. Chasing an athlete, I mean. OK, so what I'm saying is from different industries, you learn what people are actually buying. OK, in the real estate business, what are people buying? Are they buying homes? 
No, they're not buying homes in the real estate industry. They're actually buying money in the real estate industry. People think they're buying homes. They're not buying homes. They're buying leverage to leverage that asset to then take more money out the bank to buy more assets. Real estate is just an asset play. It's about leverage. It's not the actual house that they're buying. Okay. Here's an approach if you're a marketer. It's how to yay without boo. How to do something good without the bad. So how to... This would be a video context for you. So if you wanted to make content, you would say how to mix your vocals without mud. Okay, it's a way to strat it's a way to present your content. So how to blank without blank. If I was talking to producers, how to how to uh, make your 808 hit without the kick in the way or something like that. I'll reword that to be shorter, but that's a concept. How to do something, how to do the thing that's desired without the thing that they fear. How to do the thing that they love without the thing that they fear. How to get a girlfriend without, you know, feeling rejection. Okay. Things like that. So I'm going to move quicker because I really want to talk to you guys and help you guys individually and pull you onto Discord. Um, the next style is called expose. So this is when you expose. I've done videos where I expose myself. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> but I expose myself on YouTube because I beat my competitors to it. I, my video that's on my channel right now, if you go to if you go to youtube.com slash busyworksbeats, the first video on my channel that's pinned there is called Busy Works Beats Exposed. And what it actually is, is a, a um, video reel of my testimonials from everybody. So that's how I flipped a negative into a positive. Most people think when they hear Busy Works Beats Exposed, oh, they're getting a scandalous dirt on Busy Works Beats. But in reality, I flipped it and I gave them all the good news. So they're waiting for the bad news, but it's actually good news. You could actually use this format on TikTok as well. When you present a content title, you make it perceived as if it's going to be negative, but then you deliver the content and it's actually positive. Okay, so that's a technique we've seen uh, grow TikTok videos into virality simply using that technique. It's when you have like a thumbnail of a girl that's riding downhill on a bike and it looks like she's about to fall off. But then, it, but then in reality, she's going into a jump where she jumps into a pool or something. So people always expect the negative when they're um, skimming, people always expect the negative. They look for the negative when they skim. So in other words, you need to give them the things you need to convert the negative that they expect into the positive. All right. Next up to grow, you need an emotional story. I don't tell a lot of emotional stories. Um, I could do better, but you know, I, I tell stories through content and what a story actually is, is an if then sequence. OK, it's an if then sequence. So most people think stories is once upon a time, not long ago when <laughs> a story is really if I do this, then this thing happens. If I do that thing, then the next thing happens. If I do that, then the next thing happens. So movies are basically stories to tell us the actions that we should expect. So if you watch a movie and you see a little boy take a girl behind a bush and then they kiss and he falls on the ground, you think that. In reality, since that story is implanted in your subconscious mind, when you go to behind the bush as a little kid and go to kiss a girl, you fall out because you're mirroring what just happened. The if then sequence of what you saw, what's stored in your mind. So a lot of our incorrect thinking and fallacies are stories or if then sequences of stuff we've never experienced because we have nothing to replace what we were taught to put in the place. For example, you guys can look down right now. And whatever floor you're on, I guarantee the material has gaps in it. So if I look down right now, I have a hardwood floor. If Asuka says programming, yes. So right now, if I look down, I have a hardwood floor. Now it's like tile. It's not like actual hardwood. But in between the hardwood, there are little grooves because that's how they put the flooring in. They put it in piece by piece. Okay. So my point is what we do in our brain is we don't like those gaps in our brain. It's called cognitive dissonance. Whenever you have a gap in your brain, it's called cognitive dissonance. And your brain seeks to resolve the gap. Whenever you have missing information, you try to resolve the gap. This is why guys go crazy when they get broken up with. When they don't understand why they got broken up with, they go crazy because they need to fill the gap with a story. Okay, so stories are needed to create sustenance for the human or stability within a human. If you haven't experienced something, your brain will literally create a story just to fill the gap. It doesn't even have to be true. And that's what a lot of us have in our minds. We have a lot of these stories that are not true. And then the only way to replace that is to 
become aware of that and then reject it and replace it with a positive story. Even with experience, you've seen people have denial. What denial is, is when somebody has a story that was implanted, it's not necessarily true, but it's from the past. Okay. And then a reality happens and reality is here to give the real storyline, the real if then sequence. But the problem is it's already embedded in that person's subconscious mind and it was never plucked up or rejected in order to replace the new experience. So people live in what's called denial because of that, simply because they won't become aware of that subconscious glue that's basically there. They won't, they won't, uh, what's that thing called a jackhammer? They won't jackhammer the concrete up in order to replace it with the new material. Okay, so that was a little esoteric, but the goal of that was to show you why emotional stories are so important. Whenever you use emotion, you're crystallizing a thought into somebody's body. Okay, so you're implanting a story into that person's body because now you're taking over their endocrine system, their hormonal systems in order to implant your story. That's why a lot of folks on YouTube talk about rags to riches. You've seen other people talk about how to go from in their bedroom to the industry. That's called a rags to riches story. They're trying to implant into you an emotion where you get motivated and inspired. And you're like, you remember that storyline and you implant it into your mind as if it's true. You never question if it's true. You never question the details. You just automatically put it in because you're crystallizing and taking a thought that they want you to have and putting, implanting it into your body circuit, quite literally. So that's why people tell emotional stories is they really want to become a part of your DNA. So the next time they hit that trigger, that emotional trigger, you can express the same way DNA expresses when you hit triggers. Okay. Step nine out of 10 is breakthrough using breakthrough in your marketing. So if you just discovered something like, hey guys, I just discovered how to mix your vocals like Young Thug, you can position that with your audience as content. So you just discovered something, new discovery, breakthrough. Here's where we introduce feedback loops as well. I have so much to tell you guys when I'm running out of, running out of uh, getting dry throat. So I'll take a poll. Will you guys come up to Discord? If not, I'm not gonna waste my time going on Discord. Will you? call into discord you can be honest you don't have to be not honest so if you guys will call in the discord i'll open up discord again but if you're not going to call i'm not going to open it up okay so a feedback loop you need to have with your content is you need to have a way to capture and feed people back into the content a simple way to do this make a youtube channel then have an email list OK, and then after the email list, you send them to a discord. OK, because just in the case that they don't open up emails, you can always go to the to the discord and stay in touch. And then on the discord, you can promote your YouTube video, which takes them back down the rabbit hole. Start with YouTube, offer an email opt in, tell them to go to discord, which is your community where they want to stay because there's more and more people growing every day. And then it cycles back. Tell the discord, hey, there's a new YouTube video. And that way you have what's called a feedback loop. Vasco says that's why he doesn't watch TV. 11 a.m. sounds says just tuned in. What's the context for the Discord call? It's to answer your hardest problems in music business. So any business, online business you have, you could have a service business, music production business. It could be in a different industry. But if you have an online business or business in general, really it's to answer your hard questions, like your really hard questions about how to get to the next step. So Cal Beats has a question It looks like we got shiny, how to sell one beats. How does one sell beats? All right, so we're going through those steps. Okay, and the last one, in order to grow your business is simply take it. Okay, that's when you go out and you're just militant with the way you, you go try to take people's audience. I wouldn't recommend this approach because it stirs up a lot of um, defense within the uh, incumbents, people who are already in a market. So that's not the way to go. If you're trying to take it, you got to understand you got to come with content that will blow everybody away. If you're if you're going to try to take people's audiences and come with weak content, it's not going to work. You're actually going to make the person you're trying to take the audience from stronger because your your forces are too weak. Like the way Marines are so good is because they won so many fights. That's why they're so good. They're like, wow, I'm so good at this. I can win a thousand fights. Then when they win a thousand, they're like, I can win 2000 pieces of combat. They get stronger and stronger and stronger every win that they get. So if you come with content that isn't going to beat the content that you're trying to beat, it actually makes the person you're attacking stronger. 
which is backfiring against you. So that's why attacking is not the strongest thing. We got 10 votes. It's 50-50, so I'm not going to open up Discord because uh, I realize maybe you guys aren't camera ready uh, to talk, which is fine. So now let's answer your questions on YouTube. So if you have a question about business, I'm going to answer it live. Can you also take an audience through diplomacy or collabs? That would be leveraging an audience. Yeah. So I've done IG reels where I didn't have any specific requirements, but every reel was a collab with somebody. So it was a collab with this person with a 10,000 10, following, a collab with a person with 50,000 following. Every IG reel was a collab post with somebody because the the quickest way to grow without ad dollars is simply go where people already are. And they if they're similar in audience, that means they'll probably like your stuff. So I've done that with IG. IG collabs is the quickest way to grow. IG real collabs, super slept on because people don't communicate enough to do it. If you want to do it, Classy Beats, let's do an uh, IG reel. I'm back making content, so that's super simple to do. Um, just tuned in. Like, I gave people, I'm trying to think, who did I do that had a low audience? Um, is it Trevi? So there's a, a producer I met in a simple chat one time. His name was Trevi. Um, I met him through, um, damn, forgetting everybody's name, Terrace. Met him through Terrace. So I think this is his post. Hold up. It's hard to find him because I forget his username. I think it's this one. Uh, is this him? Give me a second. I'm trying to figure out. Prod. There's so many Trevies. Holy moly. <laughs> Prod Trevi. Let me look up his actual username. I don't know why I'm trying to figure it out. All right. Classy Beats wants to collab. Let's do it. That's super simple. Okay, Trevi, let me see. Trevi, I owe people so many collabs. I just got caught up when I was moving stuff. Uh, okay, Trevi, here it is. Prod.Trevi, okay. Prod.Trevi. So the reason I'm bringing him up is I did an IG collab with him, I believe. Yeah, it is. With him. Why is Instagram tripping, y'all? Instagram.com slash Prod.Trevi with two Vs. Let me show you my screen. I realize you can't see my screen. So this you're like, what is he talking about? OK, so on his page, if you go to his reels tab, you know, his reels were getting 400 views, 400 views, 1000 views, 700 views, 1000 views. We collabed on like a super throwaway reel and it has 34,000 views. So he just he levered he leveraged, pardon me, my audience. OK, in this case, and I got him some more views. It wasn't about me trying to gain from his audience. I just collabed with him because I just met him and wanted to you know, return the favor. So this is what I mean by when you collab with people, it's just a lot easier to cross pollinate um, and just bring everything under one roof. So that's a super easy technique to do. OK, um, let me see. What else am I forgetting here? So I'm answering your questions. Courtney's on YouTube. What up? She's on Instagram. I think moved to Florida. Some she left. Uh, was it Minnesota? Moved to Florida. <laughs> Shout out to Courtney. We were supposed to be for those who don't know Courtney. We were supposed to do a deal with um, Chris Moyer, my mentor, and that was what a year and something ago. But that Web three just the market tanked, and it just we had to reassemble in different ways. But thank you for hopping in. Hung Lo is here. How do you feel about AI generated music? I have some stuff I'm going to show you guys, some software I'm going to show you guys, and it's crazy. But I'm not going to reveal it yet because I want to keep it a secret for the video. All right. Who else has a business question? Just tuned in with context. I probably should have given people a context of what we've done as well. I forgot to say that in the beginning. All well. Um, Cal Beats says, how can we reach 500,000 subscribers on YouTube? You need to watch my other uh, video, how to build an online business, because <laughs> story time. Because, OK, let me go to your channel, actually. Let's just do it here. OK, so Cal Beats, if you want 500,000 subscribers, how many videos do you have? You have four videos. Your videos have totaled 22. Uh, what's that? What's 22 plus 28? 50. 88 views. So you get 88 views for four videos. Let's do some simple math. Whenever you have a goal, you need to put your goal 
Then the next line should be your accuracy within that goal. And then the third line is how much effort. So here's what I'm trying to say. What was it? 88? You have 88 views per four videos. So you divide 88 divided by four. That gives you 22. Okay, so you get on average 22 views per video currently. Doesn't mean that's going to be your lifetime rate, but currently you get 22, 22 views per video. So if you want 500,000 subscribers, we need to figure out how many subscribers you get per view. So you have 12 subscribers out of 22 views, which means, okay, we have, what would that mean? Views per subscriber, right? No, subscribers per view. So 12 divided by two, 22 gives you 0.5 subscribers every time you put a video up. Okay, so every time you put a video up, you get 0.5 subscribers. So if your goal is to get 500,000 subscribers, you need to multiply this. Uh, how about, let me figure out what math that is in my head. You need to, if you get 0.5 subscribers, everyone has two videos. Am I getting this right? Per view. I mean, two views to get one subscriber. Okay, right? Two views to get one subscriber. So if you want 500,000, two views, you need a million views to get 500,000 subscribers at your current rate. So you need to figure out how much effort you need to put in to get to a million. What does that effort look like? And that's what people don't measure, how much effort it's actually going to take. So you need to figure out how to get a million views. You currently get 22 views per video. So a million divided by 22, one, one, two, three, one, two, three, divided by 22. You're going to need, according to the current math, 45,000 videos at your current rate. But as you grow, you're not you're going to have a higher and higher view count per video. So that's going to compound. You're not going to have to create that many videos. But that's the math. You have to do 45,000 videos to get to your goal. Hanabi says some videos pick up 50 subs. You're not understanding the math. I'm averaging. Yeah, one video and it compounds over time. So, of course, that sounds crazy now, but that's because you only have four videos. I mean, you're talking to a guy who literally does this day in and day out. So I'm telling you what it is. If you guys want to see my stats, let's load it up since since Hanabi has a couple questions in mind. Let's do lifetime. Just off of YouTube, we've earned almost half a million dollars off of YouTube, 900,000 subscribers, 10 million watch hours, and 160 million views. If you divide out the numbers, we get about 35,000, 37,000 views per video, but that takes time. Currently, the person I was just um, looking at, he has 22 views per video, but over time it will go up to where it's thousands per video. So that number, that 45,000 videos number will keep going down and down and down the more that you do. It's just you don't, you're not doing enough. And that's, that's the greater point. Hopefully y'all saw my screen. Okay. That would have been a big waste of time if I just did all that. Oh, I'm not clicking all the wrong buttons. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, YouTube Shorts is one way in. It's getting a little crowded, though. It depends on the niche. But yeah, YouTube Shorts is a lot of flow right now. But is that going to sell a beat, a YouTube uh, short? Maybe, maybe not. Because maybe he has the information to give. Maybe he doesn't. So it depends on your quality of content. When do I start earning from YouTube? After 4,000 watch hours and 1,000 subscribers. That's the threshold. Hanabi says, but I'm saying that's not how it works. It's fine going off average, but it's not the most average. Accurate. Uh, some videos, even if you have a high sub count, will just not get views. Some videos will get 1,000 views. Some videos will get 80. That's why we average. That's why we average out our views. And what I'm telling the other dude is that he doesn't have enough videos to average out. He only has four videos. And I'm saying I have 4,000 videos. So my average is a lot more accurate than his average because he only has four videos. Just tune in. What's the context? Okay, I'm going back in time. How does one sell beats and produce? It's a very big question. You got to watch my online business videos. Maybe I can help you out. Um, do you mean producers having beats for sale, wanting to sell them? Or oh, this is a while ago. If you guys don't have questions, that's fine. What I'm realizing is a lot of creatives just aren't business people, but then they complain about their business not flourishing. It's because you don't want to learn business. <laughs> it's really that simple. I have business courses on my website. I had a whole free YouTube course. Only a couple people grabbed it. 
because they don't want to succeed. They just say they want to su- actually here's what people want to do. They want to complain when they don't succeed. They don't really want to succeed because you have stories in your subconscious mind that say when you succeed, now you're responsible to do X, Y and Z. And you're afraid of doing X, Y and Z. Like I'll put it in real world world terms. Maybe I'm afraid to get a six pack abs because I'm scared that I have to eat like a, a bunny every day. I can only eat carrots and soup. Maybe I like ice cream and cookies. And I realized if I want six pack abs, I'm going to have to sacrifice all the stuff that I actually want. And that's what happens with success. People are like, okay, if I want a million dollars, I have to sacrifice X, Y, and Z. And you're just too scared to sacrifice X, Y, and Z. But a lot of creatives aren't business people. Okay. But I'm giving you guys the game. I literally have a whole live stream called how to build an online business step by step. And there's like a thousand views on it. Let's see how many views it has. I'm not complaining. I'm just letting you guys know, like, this is why you're not succeeding. Okay. So if you go to my live tab, I did a video called how I built a seven figure online business empire. It has 4,000 views from two weeks ago, only 4,000 views, but there's thousands of people saying they want to sell beats online. What's the best way to sell beats? Just post them on YouTube and wait for a placement. Go watch that video. Um, Jav, go watch that video because it describes every single step. If you guys don't have any like specific questions, I'll just wrap it because we've been going for an hour and some change. How come YouTube can advertise on my videos, but I'm not compensated because it costs money to host your video. If it costs me $4 every day to host your video, of course, I'm going to try to make money off of you because you're costing me money. Now, when you start making them enough money, then they go, okay, you can get a cut. But you do cost YouTube. Every time you upload a video, you're costing YouTube because their servers aren't free. That costs electricity. It costs manpower. It costs staff. So just because it's free to upload does not mean it's free for YouTube. They're losing money when you upload. So you need to make them money. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. You need to make YouTube money in order to grow on YouTube or else you're just a liability. Scott says, I currently have 64 videos posted and 11 subs. Let's see why. I'll tell you why. I'll just be brutally honest at why your channel is not growing. Well, you just started two days ago. Okay. Um, You have to find the publishing cadence. So you've published two days ago. And it looks like you publish maybe like every 16 hours. I would spread that to daily because right now, if you cram and you don't have a name, there's no trust with your brand. So the more people see, the more they're not going to click. They're actually going to gain what's called resistance. It's kind of like when you go into the mall and the dude, um, I got this from Curtis King. When you go into Walmart and the dude with the insurance is trying to, he's like, yo man, nice kicks. Let me, can I ask you about your, uh, your life insurance? And it's some dude always asking you about life insurance. You're like, I'm here to buy chips and leave. I'm not here to talk to you about life insurance. Then you come back into Walmart. Now imagine this in the same day. You go into Walmart, dude asks you about life insurance. You forgot to buy something, so you come back into the Walmart. He he bothers you again. Hey, I know you just were in here, but let me ask you about this life insurance. You know, are you paying too much for your premium? And then you you leave Walmart and you're like, I'm never coming to Walmart because every time I come to Walmart, I'm bothered by this guy I don't trust. So that builds resistance. Whenever you overly publish without trust, it builds resistance more than it builds trust. Classy Beats says, question, I'm starting to put myself out there on YouTube and have conversations with artists. What are some ways I can give them value through conversations? Let me see what you mean. I'm going to open up your channel to see what that means. And we'll pick it out. I started a new YouTube channel called Music Industry Combos. Okay, channels. Um, First thing I would do real quick is under the channels tab, I know you're trying to support your friends and all this, but this just makes it confusing for me as a as a um, follower. So what I would, tr- what I would do, I'm not telling you what to do, but I would definitely make the subscriptions thing hidden because these are just people that I don't know. And it's just going to make me confused on how to find your thing. And then I would take away all your channels that aren't like your main channel. Cause you have a lot of channels, which is almost too segmented. Okay. You have classy beats, TV, classy 2.0, classy unleashed. It's too many segments. Your break. It's like, it's like you're trying to invest in stocks with a dollar. It's like, yeah, you can make 2% on 25 cents, but that's not a lot of money. 
if you put $10 into a stock, it made 25%. That would be greater. And you need to focus in. You need to cut the fat. You have too many too many paths. I don't know if you've ever been in New York, but what scares me to, to tears when I go to New York is their subway system. And it's because there's a thousand trains. You're like, where am I going? I have no idea how to get downtown because there's 10 million trains going every single direction. And that's what's happening here. Where it's too many trains without enough traffic and without enough brand recognition. Okay, music industry combos, I subscribed. I'll pick that apart in a second. But going back to Scott Gilded, um, you're publishing too fast. That's the problem. And nobody knows your name. So you're publishing way too much. So if I open up your tracks, let me see what it sounds like. Okay, let me see what else you got. Okay, so it's on brand. At least it's not like a mismatch. That's usually the case most of the time. People put future in the video and then it sounds nothing like future. But luckily you're on brand with it. I don't know who Jake Rich is, so I can't really compare. Um, let me also see something here. Your keywords. Do you use tags? Let me see. Yeah, you use SEO, it says. Good. Use a lot of tags. Hmm. Let's see what your offer is. Buy two, get one free. Buy three, get two free download purchase. Also, your links don't work. They're not clickable. So you want to double check your double check your links on YouTube. They're not clickable, which means you're never going to get traffic. Um, and I would put instead of putting your at, I would put your actual Instagram link, HTTP, you know, Instagram dot whatever. That way people can actually click it and go straight to your actual page instead of trying to find you. That's not going to work. Also, take out the tags. This is against the policies on YouTube. So take all these excess things out. It doesn't help. Um, get rid of the disclaimer. That just scares people away. Um, this is like you're threatening people before they even bought anything from you. You're like, if you steal my belt, I will chase you down with my razor and cut you. It's like nobody even bought a belt yet. So take the disclaimer out. It's pointless. People are going to steal your beats whether you know it or not. So just take it out. Um, you don't want to scare people away. Also on your page, on the about page, have a link to your website. Get rid of these links without hyperlinks. So on YouTube in the back end, you can actually put in your website. Um, I forget which tab it is, but there's a way to put it in. Like if you go to mine here, let me show you what I'm talking about. So go to YouTube, busy works, beats. Super Bowl just started. Shout out to everybody who's even here. So if you go to my about page, you'll see links and then it goes to my actual website with a clickable link. That's what you want. You never want to put text because people can't click it and they're not going to search. So that's why you're not getting traffic to your website. Your links aren't clickable. As far as your videos, um, again, you're publishing way too fast. You have a lot of content, but you're just doing way too much. Okay, you need to focus on where's your audience, who has the audience. You need to do content around that before you just start posting tight beats. Like, what are the problems that your audience has? Answer those questions. You know, start with the problems that people have. They can't figure out the best mic to record with. Put that video on your channel. That will bring people in. And then you give them the beat to buy. What people use YouTube to do is promote their products. And you got to remember, I don't put my products on YouTube. They're on my website. I use the videos on YouTube to drive people to my products. And here's the problem I've seen with a lot of producers. They tend to use YouTube like it's a big store. OK, so there's other ways to pull people in. I just wouldn't recommend that because you're going to get lower and lower eyes on your stuff. I know there's type B channels out there that beat the odds, but there's millions of people trying to do the same thing. It's not going to work. So you need to build content around what people are actually searching for because they're not. You have a couple of videos that popped off, which is fine. But those are anomalies to your whole business model. So you could play the lottery game and try to get a video that strikes off. But your business model is flawed because there's no flow. There's no reason to go to your website. If you give everybody your beats on the YouTube, I could just type in YouTube to MP3, download your beat, never tell you about it, put out a song. You'll never know. No matter how much you say you're going to chase people down, you never know. It's not even worth the legal fees to go do it because you're not going to get money from it anyway. So you're giving away too much up front and it's not technically valid. It's valuable but it's not valuable to the person coming to your channel. So I'm not going to beat you down, but 
you know, think about the person you're trying to sell to. What are their actual problems? Okay. That's what you need to address on your channel. Their actual problems. Okay. So that's what I would recommend. Um, and the main thing is just make sure your links, links are clickable. Okay. Let's go to class E beats. He has a new, uh, music industry combos. I'll do one with you if you want to do one to give you a little bit of, um, traffic. Um, let me see here. Hold up. Uh, cause classy beats is actually a person who does what the heck he learns. So that's why I'm willing to do it. Music industry combos. Let's see. So you have shorts. Is your music being slept on? Let's see. What's up guys. I'm classy beats from ClassyBeats.com, And Finally, this month, the smile we've been waiting for today at 12 PM Eastern standard time. We're going to be back with another episode. Of All right. Is your music being slept on? Okay, he's, that sounds like an announcement to me. What's up guys. We've got another great show coming for you this. These shorts sound like announcements more than it does content. I would use the community tab for announcements more than I would use the actual content because then people kind of brush over it. Like whenever you post next, then people might go, oh, it's not important. It's just an announcement. You know, you never want to confuse. I'm trying to think of an analogy here. Hmm. How can I? Hmm. Like, for example, there's a cat in the home. So if I'm opening up a drawer, she associates, it's called Pavlovian response. If I open up a drawer, she assumes that I'm going in to grab her food, but I might be opening up a drawer to just get my, you know, scissors or something. So you don't want the cat to be triggered every time I open up the drawer because she's going to be disappointed if I'm not pulling out her food. It's actually going to make her more hungry and more miserable if I don't feed her. So you don't want to associate with your audience those shorts, every time they see a short, they go, oh, it's just an announcement. Because by the time you have content or, you know, however you break up your content into shorts, they're going to be like, oh, it's just another announcement. It's called Pavlovian response. And you don't want to train people to expect that outcome. It seems like I don't know what you use your shorts for, but I just wouldn't train them to expect that outcome. OK, so let's see. Class EBT goes live. It says. Um, is your music being slept on? Number one thing I would do for YouTube is capitalize every word. Um, it just stands out more. So that's a secret I found, at least. It's not a secret. Um, AI ruined in the music industry. Justin Bieber sells his catalog. For these, okay, I'm giving you a little quick burst. I'm not telling you what's right or wrong because it's all testing. But what I would do, if you have long titles like this, it seems like your characters, let me see, is there a character counter? Character counter. Let's do something real quick. So I learned that the best YouTube titles are 52 characters. You can see on my screen. Now, mobile is completely different, but on my screen, you know, it has your title and then it cuts off and it says dot, dot, dot. So a lot of your title, I don't know what the rest says, but I'm assuming it's just a number for the episode. I would try staying away from that and put it in the thumbnail instead of the actual title. Um, and that's because it eats up a lot of space. The MIC S1E1. That's usually reserved for people like a Joe Budden where his title is so small that he has to make it like make sense. So if I go to Joe Budden's podcast, pardon me, I spelled Budden wrong. You know, it's called he takes up the whole title with the Joe Budden podcast, episode 601, and then like a couple words, whereas yours is a clickbait, not clickbait. Yours is a clickable title with that has content in the title, but then you're trying to smash in your episode at the end. But because you're in a niche where you can actually have a long title, you don't necessarily need that. If you're going to use that, I would recommend throwing it in the web uh, thumbnail as opposed to the title. OK, because we want to read it from start to finish. So let's see how many um, characters you use in your titles. 61 characters on the first one. I would try to cut that down to 52. Also, capitalize every word within your title. Test that out. It says, is your music being slept on? Three ways to grow your fan base. Um, I would just keep testing different ways to, you know, emotionalize people. I'm going to give you guys a quick little thing real quick from my actual notes. I only really teach this to my disciples, um, but I'll show you guys something. And these are the emotional copywriting triggers that you want to tap into. So hold on, let me load it up real quick. So you want to test all your titles, all your emails, all your videos with these specific um, things. Let me load it up. Just give me a second to find it. Oh, here it is right here. Duh. So I have notes where I just have everything. Okay, so let's go to psychological triggers. Okay, here we go. 
So this is the part where everybody in the chat can write this down. This applies to everything online and offline. These are called Psychological Triggers. There's a book by Robert Cialdini. I'm going to link that below, the Robert Cialdini book. Let me actually write this down so I don't forget. Robert Cialdini and um, Alex Hermosi. Okay, I'll link those later. But Robert Cialdini has a book called Influence, and it talks about the psychological triggers that um, get tapped into to make people buy, basically, because we're emotional creatures. And the way the government and all these places take advantage of us is make us emotional. So we react based on our emotions because they can trigger different actions that they want. So the goal is make your audience emotional so that you can persuade them to do something in your intent. And the way you do that is using pain aversion. I'm going to just run quickly through these because it's a lot of them. Pain aversion. People want to run away from pain more than they want to gain pleasure. Okay. You want to use community. That's why I hear a lot of YouTubers say community a thousand times in a second because people want to be surrounded. There's different personality types and the there's so much to teach y'all, but there's B-A-N-K -A personality types. In short, they're usually based around Zodiac. Um, the B personality type is a blueprint personality type. Okay, A is action personality type. N is a nurture, nurturing personality type. And a K is a knowledge personality type. So a B personality type is very step by step. So if I was talking to a B personality step, I would a B personality type, I would say, hey, here's how I teach you how to mix step by step in our new mixing course called Mixing Fundamentals at premium.busyworksbeats.com. That's the language I have to speak to the person who's a B personality type. To the A personality type, they like to take action. So I would say, want to get hands on mixing, you know, um, Make your bass boom when you slide these 808s. You have to use a lot of action words to communicate with those people. N personality types are nurturing personality types. They love community. They love friendship. They love being surrounded by other people. And K personality types are based on knowledge, why something works. I'm going to explain why this bass has a lot of saturation in it when I'm mixing my Michael Jackson stems live in our new course called the Mixing Fundamentals at premium.busyworksbeats.com. I explain why you add compression, not just how much to add, but why. So you're talking to different personality types, and that's why this community one is so powerful for the N personality type. Next up, the psychological trigger is called common enemy. You saw Trump use this to galvanize all the Christians against the Muslims. That was his way of getting a bunch of votes. Um, Hitler used it, you know, to galvanize the Nazis against the Jewish folks. So it can be used for good and bad, common enemy. A lot of church pastors use it, you know, God, Satan, you know, who's the other enemy? Who's the other side, which galvanizes your people against the thing that you're pointing at. That's used a lot in relationships as well. Gain pleasure is another psychological trigger. Again, people would rather avert pain than they would gain pleasure, but gaining pleasure is also a reason why people buy celebrity. You've seen it all the time. Metro Boomin type beat, Metro Boomin tutorial, blah, 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 using celebrity. Current event is another psychological trigger. Using something that happened like the UFO sighting in Alaska, or it seems like classy beats kind of, or Joe Budden uses a lot of, um, you know, current event. He's basically a social commentator on the current events. That's basically his whole podcast with his crew there. Um, Classy Beats put 100 in the pot. He says, thank you for the feedback. I'm putting everything you mentioned into practice right now. AKA, he's like, you better be locked in for this interview. Yeah, I'll help you out for sure. Um, if you want to go live or however it works, I'll do that with you. Class E Beats. So you guys hear it? I'm now going to have to be accountable to everybody because now it's public. So I promise Class E Beats a live stream combo plus um, IG Real collabs. That's what I promise. So I have to deliver. Okay, so you can hold me to it. If you guys don't see it, then be like, game, where's your IG collab with Classy Beats that you promised us? Okay, so the next thing is called New Things. And thank you, Classy Beats. New Things, novelty is what keeps people excited. So the same way I build a whole business model around like the, the Yu-Gi-Oh cards, it creates novelty because every single pack that they buy is not the same sounds over and over and over again. It's a different random sound. So it's a lot of novelty or new things. People love variety and they love novelty combined. I'm going to move a little bit quicker here, but the next trigger is explaining why. So this is um, 
whenever you have something that's too good to be true, you need to explain why. So that's why I just explained the Classy Beats. Why I'm going to go on this show is because he actually puts stuff into action. So I feel like he's somebody who just needs information to get to that next tier where he's trying to go. So I, that's why I explained why I offered to do what I did. The next one is tell a story. I already told you guys the power of emotional story earlier. Um, simple and easy. You know, that's kind of my brand. I just tell you guys, hey, I know this music production looks complex, but let me make it super simple for you. I say that all the time. That's kind of what I built built my brand around. Some people build their brand around curiosity, which is staying mysterious, not revealing too much. Um, you know, if you have a pet at home, you could try this at home. Whenever a pet doesn't want to go through, um, like if you call your pet and they don't want to come, what you could do is slowly close the door. Just slowly close the door. Now, don't fully close it, but slowly close the door and they're going to come running through that door. It's because there's something about not knowing what's on the other side of something, the unknowns that gets us super intrigued to keep going. And that also creates urgency because it's like, okay, I have two seconds to run through that door or this door is going to be forever be closed. And that's what curiosity taps into. You know, if we're talking about, I've seen guys try to use it to grab girls, for example, I've seen it all. You know, the urgency one is, hey, I'm only in town for three days. You know, uh, you know, want to hang out. I'm only here for two more days, that type of thing. Or they'll be curious or curious. I mean, they'll spark curiosity by not replying right away. So now the other person goes, why aren't they replying right away? He must be doing something busier. You know, all those little stupid games people play. That is using curiosity, but you can use it in a, a different way, which is presenting unknowns to people. You don't have to tease people and, you know, cajole them, cajole them. Um, next is social proof. So this is what I have a lot of. If you go to my YouTube page um, slash busy works beats, you'll see that the first video you see is all social proof on my channel. Um, how do I go to the front? I just I forgot I was logged in. Hold on. Give me a second. Let's go incognito. Go to my channel. The first thing you see is not what I expected. <laughs> where is my video? It usually gives you a channel preview. I don't know where it's at. Why it looks different. Maybe because I'm live. That's probably why. But usually what pops up is busy works beats exposed. OK, and it's a video that I made with a bunch of testimonials. OK, so if you click this video, look just like you. OK, it goes through a bunch of testimonials as to all the people I've helped and how I've helped them. And, you know, a bunch of celebrities are in here, a bunch of, you know, producers just like you are in here. So this isn't really the plug. He just don't like to promote it. He know, he know everything. Okay, so a bunch of stuff like that. It's called social proof. Okay, so I use it all the time. And what that does is it helps people make a faster decision without needing to justify and go back and validate everything that you're presenting. It makes the argument a lot easier. So next is relative perspective. If you're trying to persuade folks, um, like I said to someone earlier, I said, when you go from 50 to 100, that's a 100% increase. When you go from 100 to 50, that's only a 50% decrease. And people would rather feel like they're going up 100%. But you want to make them feel like your price came down 50%. So the way you do that is you double your price. And then when it's time to negotiate, you go, okay, I'll do up to 50%. So they feel like they're getting a deal. In that case, that's called the relative perspective. People don't understand value without a comparison. Next up is called scarcity, which I talked about with the uh, pet analogy, closing that door. The pets feel like, oh, I have a limited time to run through that door before the opportunity goes away. And then we have controversy, which we've seen in the other tab that I just pulled up. You know, other people have used it to now with controversy, like six, nine, for example, the energy that comes with that is very low frequency energy. So if you're going to use controversy, expect really, really low frequency stuff to happen. OK, because that's the energy level that you're on with that um, marketing tactic. I used it with the beat battle with Curtis King, but it introduced a lot of that low frequency. So I've learned that it's not the greatest uh, marketing strategy. It's very popular. We've had 720 people in our lives. On um, IG Live, I had 720 people watching our beat battle. But the problem is, with controversy comes low frequency. Okay, next up is pattern interrupt. Pattern interrupt is me like changing the background colors, for example. That's a pattern interrupt. I do, I do something to break what you expect. Okay, that's called pattern interrupt. Let me make sure my thing even shows it. So instead of me having the color background I just had, I just changed it to green. 
because I'm trying to break what you already expect to get you out of the loop of expectation. This is what I talked about before with the uh, person who was putting out the beats every day, like three beats a day. The problem is he's introducing what's called, oh no, I said this to class E beats. I said, if all your shorts, if people expect announcements in the shorts, we're building up a pattern. We're building up a routine. We're building up a rhythm, a cadence. And if every short he posts is announcements, I think, okay, if I see a shorts notification next time, it's probably an announcement. So we want to break people out of this expectation. We want to break them out of that pattern. That's called pattern interrupt. And, you know, I have a couple other more, a couple other ones, minimum time investment. If you just give me 45 seconds of your time, you create what's called an open loop. I don't have time to explain all this, um, but you want to be entertaining, be funny, and don't not be funny. Or don't be not funny, I meant to say. And then social proof. Okay, so that was, those are the psychological triggers that you guys need to master if you want to get greater results online. The first, first, first step is getting people to click, getting people to view. And in order to get people to view, you have to emotionalize them and trigger their emotions in order to click that button, to click your email, to click your video, to click whatever. You got to charge them up, make them feel like there's a reason why. Let's go to um, Classy Beats format. He says, is your music being slept on? Let's see. Who's the guest, I guess? I'm going to skip a little bit ahead. This seems like a solo cast. From this what I up can on see. the screen and y'all let me, let me know. 2x speed, hold up. If we're good. So there's not going to be any sound. So let me make this a little bit larger. There we go. All right. So we see that record of the year <clears throat> was by Lizzo and about damn time. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I don't pers- I'm not personally a fan of Lizzo, but I think she's, uh, she has a lot of music out there. She- okay. So it says, is your music being slept on? Now, I skipped ahead, which most people will probably do. And then we're talking about like big time people. So I don't know what point you're trying to make. But if I'm comparing myself against a Lizzo, it's like, of course, my stuff's being slept. That's, a big fan base that's, the, I, that's I how I'm saying it as a, a I can see, I can see how that would be a record of the year. So y'all let me know what you think about these as I go through them in the chat. And then another by Beyonce. The- All right, so I'm skipping ahead a little bit. From 2019, I was uploading, 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 really not seeing any 500,000 listeners. Finally, that's a lot of listeners. Later, at the end of 2021, I started to see a little bit of progress. But God, even then... Um, even then, oh, and that's a good question. I'll answer that in a second. But even then, it wasn't really that much, right? Because I was getting, you know, this is every day. It's 400, 500. And I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, I've got a couple thousand monthly listeners. But it's still, it never, I never saw any, like, major spikes for another eight months, which is crazy. Yeah, that's a good see. point. I like how you're projecting how it does take time. Um, dang, what video was that? I'm trying to think. It took 45 days. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Darn, I forgot what video it was now at the top of my head. I think it was this one. How music producers steal, how music industry producers steal melodies. Now, a lot of music industry producers are like, that's not what we do. It's like, of course, you're not the one who does it. There's a lot of loop makers, a lot of sound designers who do it. Okay, so this video, if you look at the actual time period of views, it goes from me posting to, let's see, 36 days is about a month out. So one month later, nothing. Two months later, it starts to pick up speed. Two months. It took two months before YouTube started pushing this video. And then it it started to become one of the most popular videos on my channel. So people are expecting results in like a millisecond. And you guys have to understand how YouTube works is it goes through a lot of filters. You know, I don't have time to explain that, but there's a book called by Daryl Eves. I'll link it below. Daryl Eves describes all the filters that something has to go through in order to get to that homepage where they really, really push it. You know, it has to do with click through rate and a lot of things. So you can see my click through rate is above 5.6% because you guys have to remember, if you want YouTube to serve your thing to millions of people and nobody clicks it, YouTube loses people's attention. So that actually hurts them to keep projecting something that doesn't have a high click through rate. So the goal is how do you increase your click through rate? And that's what I'm talking. That's why I'm giving you these psychological triggers on how to get people to click so that YouTube actually serves your content to, you know, the different folks around the world, because that's what you want. But you have to give them what they want, which is something that people will actually click on. So your video is similar to a product in a store. Um, What short is this? This is the short called. um, Darn, where's the title? The short is called. Let me run that back. I forgot where it was. It's called How Industry Music Producers Steal Melodies. Okay, but it took two months for that thing to grab um, some traction. Okay, so going to Class E Beats' point is that it could take a lot of time. People who go watch uh, the live stream of my show get a chance to join the live at the end and give their opinion on the topic. So I'll link the live show for everybody to watch. Click. He 
here for class E beats live. Awesome. Yeah. What I'll do when we go live, whenever that is, I'll tell my whole discord and I'll tell um, the email that way. You know, you can have like a community discussion or whatever you format it. Where I don't coming from. But this is from uh, Spotify, says Cray. He said, what? what? So I'm going to skip ahead because this, this is like an hour. Look at this part right here. Tracks. How many tracks have I uploaded? 15, 1,500 tracks, which is crazy. But like I said, but that's how much it takes. You know, if people aren't doing enough and Classy Beats is showing you how much it takes to do enough. A thousand tracks. I bet you everybody in here complaining about they're not getting attention. Probably it's less than 100. Wow. That, oh. We got to give her another air horn. Are commenting on MAC? She said, Is your music being slept on? This is going to be a good episode. Okay. Uh, Aaron said, if somebody is sleeping on you, you're, it's your responsibility to wake them up. Not only is that a great a great quote, that's a bar too. And uh, what, what is the chat saying? Someone says, uh, Kanye would disagree. Didn't he get slept on by various labels before Rocket? Oh, okay. This is like a reaction type video. Interesting. I'm going to have to go through my spare time and run it at 2x speed. The main thing I would say, I mean, just as a quick glance, your thumbnails are cool. Um... I would just say maybe just like I said, the most basic thing is just capitalize every other word, shorten the titles a little bit so that we can see the whole title. Like it says here, you see this abrupt, this abridged version. Now I don't see the word Justin Bieber sells catalog. It just says, is AI ruining the music industry? Justin Bieber sell. And therefore, I don't know what's happening. If in another recommendation, I know these are so simple, but it could determine the difference between a 3% click through and a 5% is Whenever you have multiple topics like this, it might be better to put just commas and not make it like part one, part two. Just make it like, how do I explain this? Like if I go to my videos, for example, I had to react to a lot of people. So I just shoved everybody's name in with just a comma and it worked. It just says reacting to Kyle Beats, comma, Nick Mir, comma, you know, just topic, comma, topic, comma, topic, comma, instead of trying to format it like something people should click. I think when you have multiple topics like that, just the fact that it's in the title alone is the value. Okay, so again, we can go through. When I create my mastermind group, I, I will definitely share more tips and stuff. I'll have you in there um, giving you the insights and different things. Okay. So if anybody has other business questions for me, I'm here for you to give you free coaching while I'm here. Get it while it lasts because this is not going to recur. People would rather view the dog rather people would rather view the dog rarely seen as opposed to the one that never goes away. Same goes with generating hype for music. Sometimes, you know, if you only hear one bad song every two months, it's still a bad song. So that's not a universal truth, but it, it sometimes it's true. That usually works for people who have already established social proof. Like, for example, Mr. Beast. He can put out a YouTube every month or so because he's Mr. Beast. His people trust that when that one video comes out, it's going to be the video. Whereas, you know, why is Mr. Beast thing not Mr. Beast? That's interesting. His URL isn't even Mr. Beast. Okay, so here's Mr. Beast. He puts out a video. I'm using him as an example because people watch his stuff on like crazy levels. Two weeks ago, he put out a video. One month ago, two months ago. So he might put out, you know, maximum three videos a month. But because he has such a huge following, when he does launch that project, of course, it's going to go crazy. Whereas people who don't have an, an audience, you have to build a cadence, you have to build a rhythm first. And that rhythm builds trust, because when people feel a constancy, that's what they feel. That's what trust is, a constancy of a, an expectation. So that's what trust actually is, a constancy of an expectation. There's something called impressions. The reason you trust your parents is because you saw them the most. Okay, it's something called impressions. How many seeds have they planted in your subconscious mind? Since you guys don't have any more questions, I'm going to wrap this. We've been live for almost two hours. Um, I don't really have any other points outside of the 10 we went over. But if you want me to go live more about business, I'll try to go live more. But I don't think everybody's ready for this business type talk. Uh, you guys are more creatives, which is completely fine. You don't want to run your own business. It's cool with me. There's less people in my way. Uh, what's the best way to sell beats? Just post them to YouTube. Wait for placements, YouTube monetization. I would say if you guys are putting stuff on YouTube, the best way to maximize and optimize 
monetization is one, making sure you're monetized on YouTube, two, making shorts that you can monetize on IG and Facebook. People don't know about Facebook shorts, Facebook reels. Three is when you send people to your website, have more than just the beat bundle stuff together. You can leverage other people's assets like give away the stuff that I talked about before. You can give away a guide to YouTube from BusyWorks Beats or an affiliate discount that only you have if you join us in affiliate at BusyWorksBeats.com. We now have our affiliate program. So you can join here as an affiliate. If you click the top banner here, go to join affiliate program. Okay. And you can now share your, um, you know, my products with your audience and you get a cut and they get a discount. So it's a win-win. So that will increase the value of your product. Uh, I kind of lost my train of thought. I forgot the question. Oh, how to monet, how to do more than just monetize the beat. Okay. So again, you have the YouTube monetization. You have all the shorts monetization. You have selling the beat on your website. You have bundling. That's four different ways to monetize right there. And the fifth way could be your services and everything else on top using what's called a value ladder. That's how you would increase your value over time. It's a lot to teach. That would require probably a whole episode. Is it better for branding to keep the YouTube content in one place or start separate channels? The reason I don't start separate channels is because of Google ads, for example. Um, I like to keep all my data in one place. So that's why I don't have a gazillion channels. Um, Oh, I see. see how fast Classy Beats implement stuff. He he took away all the excess that quick. I'm teaching guys on YouTube. It takes them two months to do stuff. Classy Beats already implemented the channels thing already. So I don't know what Classy Lo-Fi is, um, but it probably isn't necessary to your brand. Um, classy Beats is how I know you. I didn't know about music industry combos as a separate thing, but I do like how you separated it because this way you can post your musical expressions on this channel, and then you could have your more businessy stuff separated. All right, so that's that. Yeah, I've found that it usually comes down to three. So to answer your question, my biggest mailing list, I have hundreds of thousands of people on my mailing list. The top three are, you know, it goes into three buckets of people. You know, most of them are FL Studio people, but then there's three main buckets people want to talk about. So that's what I found is it usually comes down to three. So max three channels, but I wouldn't segment the entire channel like that. You know, try to keep it all under one, one roof. It's just a lot easier for people who search. Will you stop using FL Studio 100%? No, I'm not going to stop using it. Should you separate your type B channel and a how-to channel? No, I think people are just scared to do it because they think it's going to break you guys got to realize if they're coming to your channel for beats, they probably have issues with their microphone, their mixing, you know, so to serve your audience, you got to give them more than just French fries. You know, McDonald's has French fries, hamburgers, salads. Um, you know, what else do they serve? I don't know. Ice cream. OK, but it's all food. You got to give them different types of food. They don't only like one type of food. And, he, and most people think that, OK, I gave them beef with salt on it instead of beef with pepper on it. But people like chicken, you know, you're going to give them beef, chicken, pork, steak, whatever, lobster. And most people keep giving their audience steak, but with a different topping on top. And it's like, OK, they want chicken, though. They want to try out different types of meats. I think I hear another YouTuber talking about how he studied YouTube. Yeah, YouTube is a very mysterious thing. Now, nobody will truly know because it's so deep into their coding that it nobody will know. And Google will not share their trade secrets with anybody because people can exploit it. Any tips for advertising your new merch already existing merch? Let's go to your website and see how it is. After this question, I'm going to wrap it because we're we're moving to the tail end of this live. All right. So Bento Boy says, any tips on how to sell merch? Merch is you have to do everything that I said earlier in this video. Plus, go to my other go to my YouTube video where I went live. Go to my YouTube. Here, I'm going to show you the video. Give me a second. So go to YouTube.com slash BusyWorksBeats. Go to my live tab and scroll down until you see how I built a seven-figure online business empire. Go watch this video. That explains how to build up the foundation of business. Now, once you have that, you have to understand that your audience who buys merch, they're only buying merch because that's the only way they can express reciprocity to you. 
So I've had people in fashion, film, modeling, all types of industries. The one thing I saw in the modeling industry, for example, was you would have a girl model who had a primar primarily male audience. And then the girl would go try to sell dresses. I'm like, you think guys are going to buy dresses? You're selling your audience. Your audience is 10,000 guys and you're trying to make dresses. That's a mismatch of the audience. So what I'm saying is if that person created a product for their male audience, then the men would go reciprocate the energy from the value that they receive from that person. Okay, so you have to create so merch. What I'm trying to say is just a way for people to express value if they can't express it any other way. It's usually for entertainment brands because entertainment brands, they don't have anything to sell you except for merch. Okay, whereas you just watch and they get ad dollars. Okay, and product placement and different things. So entertainment is more about product placement, merch and kind of indirect value more than direct sales like my channel, for example, where I teach you and then I send you straight to my website. You know, comedians and stuff don't really do that. All right. So I'm going to end it here because we've exhausted ourselves. Um, it was fun, kind of. I wish people would hop up to the calls a little bit more and not be so scared. But um, I'm going to end it here. Let you guys enjoy the Super Bowl to each. I don't know. There's no ending phrase I have to say, but just go to busy. Just go to premium.busyworksbeats.com. Look how I do business. Look at how I do business. Go to busyworksbeats.com and look at how I do business and just study the way that I do stuff. Go to my YouTube, click all the links, keep going through all the links and just see how it works. Sign up to my email list, see how it works. Did you think AI will break producers or help them? I think it'll help producers.